In the center of Belfast City, just opposite the Europa Hotel, is the Crown Liquor Saloon, formerly the Crown Bar. The decadent pub dates back to the early 1800s and received a substantial renovation in the 1880s, giving the building its trademark Victorian decor. Staff and regulars are familiar with a particular name, Amelia. Amelia was supposedly a prostitute who frequented the bar in the 1800s. There are slight variations in how she died, but depending on who you ask, she either fell down the building stairs or was pushed by her pimp. Bartenders have reported moving objects, glasses being pushed off tables, and even sightings of Amelia herself. A mere two doors down from the crown is Robinson's Bar, dating to 1895. Robinson's is perhaps most well-renowned for its collection of authentic Titanic memorabilia, recovered from the sunken ship. Among the artifacts is the rather unsettling Philomena doll, supposedly found floating amongst the wreckage. However, Robinson's may have an even stronger connection to the Titanic, as the apparition of John Smith, Titanic's captain, is said to be seen within the walls. Now, it's very likely that this story has thrived due to extensive tourism, and there are multiple accounts of John Smith's ghost in numerous locations apart from this pub, including the home he was born in. However, it does raise an interesting question. Is it possible for objects to hold any information about the events of the past? The ghost appearing in Robinson's would suggest that it is not the building which is haunted, but the external objects which have been placed inside. Leaving the streets of Belfast, we come to Grace Nails in Donaghadee. It first opened in 1611 as the King's Arms, but was renamed after a famous landlady called Grace. The establishment was a wedding present from her father, and she ran it for many years, puffing on a clay pipe as she watched over the regular punters. Grace's ghost is often seen at the front bar in Victorian clothing, tidying glasses and smoking her pipe. Footsteps and creaking floorboards are heard on the first floor, and the strong scent of tobacco is often smelt in the stairwell, despite smoking being banned for many years. In the small town of Carrickfergus is the Dobbins Inn. The building has had many uses since its construction in the 13th century. At one time, it was an old police barracks, and the reception area also contains a priest's hole. There are rumours that an underground tunnel once connected the Dobbins with the nearby Carrickfergus Castle. An ancient ghost story surrounds this history-steeped building. Elizabeth, the wife of one of the 17th century commanders at Carrickfergus Castle, had an affair with another soldier nicknamed Buttoncat. When Elizabeth's husband caught wind of the affair, he senselessly murdered both of them. Elizabeth's ghost still haunts the pub to this day, stroking the faces of visitors as they sleep, and she has also been sighted floating through one of the central chimney breasts and appearing again on the other side. Finally, we return to Belfast and the archaic wine cellar entry, which is home to Belfast's oldest pub, White's Tavern. The building has held a license to serve alcohol since 1630, and has existed through some very turbulent times in Irish history. In 1798, Presbyterian rebel Henry Joy McCracken, a member of the Society of United Irishmen, was hanged less than a hundred yards away. He was only 30 years old. White's Tavern would have been a favorite haunt of McCracken and his fellow revolutionaries, Wolf Tone and Thomas Russell. There, they would have read the American Declaration of Independence, first published by McCracken's grandfather, Francis Joy, founder of the Belfast Newsletter. This photograph was taken by Jerry Judge in 2014, and appears to show a phantom embracing a girl standing outside the bar. Pubs, inns and taverns are often some of the most well-preserved and oldest buildings in our towns and cities. I often consider why this is. I think one of the reasons is that they are largely quite insignificant, at least in the broader strokes of history. They aren't subject to religious conflict like churches and cathedrals, nor the political terrorism of government buildings and societal meeting halls. But 
They begin to become important and even spiritually significant when people realise just how long their local watering hole has been serving the community. Most people in all classes of society can appreciate the simple comfort of a cosy traditional pub with open fires and hand-pulled pints. They're a supportive backdrop and warm embrace from the sometimes brutal realities of existence from which we so desperately need reprieve. It's not surprising then that even those who have departed this life would return to a place they found comfort, love, happiness and rest. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.